Okay, so guys, today's practical uh, is from the year May, June, 2017, paper three, four. Uh, so let's start. Um, some plants contain types of molecules which can be useful. For example, in an industrial process, right? Uh, to find the best source of one of these molecules may require estimating the concentration of a useful molecule in plant extract. So our today's uh, objective is to, that you are required to estimate, right? Estimate the concentration of molecule M in a sample of a plant extract, U, right? So molecule M changes the color of potassium permanganate uh, from pink to colorless. The original color of potassium permanganate is pink and it will change from pink to colorless if the molecule M is present. And of course, the rate of change of color of potassium permanganate depends upon the concentration of M in the sample. The more the concentration, the lesser the time it will take uh, for potassium permanganate, KMNO4, to change from pink to colorless, right? That's very much understandable. <clears throat> now, what will you do? You are supposed to prepare a simple dilution, right? Not a serial dilution, but a simple one. And simple dilutions are very, of course, easy to make. So you will make a simple dilution of a 10% solution of molecule M labeled 10M. You have been provided already with the solution, okay? And it has been labeled 10M. And you will make a simple dilution of it. And then after that, you will record the time taken for the pink color of K to change to the end point for each of the concentrations of molecule M, right? It's a very easy experiment. It's not that difficult. So <clears throat> these are the various things that have been provided to you. Uh, you have already a 10% solution of molecule M. You've got distilled water because you'll be using that for making dilutions. You have got U also because U is the <clears throat> plant extract in which you will be <clears throat> estimating the concentration of molecule M, right? Sulfuric acid has been given because sulfuric acid will be used uh, so that the color of potassium permanganate changes. And then you have potassium permanganate solution. So you have to be just careful with sulfuric acid so that it doesn't uh, fall on your skin because it's irritant. Although it's diluted, but still you have to be very careful. And as it says in the description that if A comes into contact with your skin, you have to wash it off immediately with under cold water. It is recommended that you wear suitable eye protection. So please be careful with this. <clears throat> Moving on to how to make simple dilution. You are required to make simple dilutions of the 10M solution, which reduce the concentration between each successive dilution. So as you keep on making another subsequent dilution, the concentration should reduce, right? And you need to prepare 10 cm cube of each concentration, meaning that whichever dilution you are making, the total volume of that dilution should be 10 cm cube or 10 ml. So don't forget that. Now this table shows you how to make up one of the concentrations of the molecule M you will use. Decide which concentration is the molecule M to prepare using simple dilutions of the 10 M solution. The first one has been done for you, this one. As it shows that this has been provided to you. Okay, so the first one will be of course having a concentration of 10% which is already given. So since you want to keep it 10%, so you will not be adding any distilled water, DW, the volume of distilled water added will be zero. So the percentage concentration of this first dilution will be 10, right? Now, if you want to move, if you want to make, as it says, you have to reduce the concentration between each successive dilution. So you will have to decrease it most probably from 10 to eight and then from eight to six and six to four. So for that, you will be using eight over here and two ml for dilution over here so that you get uh, a, an eight percent concentration of molecule m and so on and you can see at these figures that if we add them up eight and two is ten six and four is ten and four and six is also ten so this means you will have to make these simple dilutions in such a manner that the overall volume for each concentration should be 10 cm cube as the instruction says, right? So this is a very simple one. You'll do, you'll make these dilutions quickly. You will put them into four different tubes, right? And then let's look at this. 
Prepare the concentrations of molecule M as shown in table 1.1 and then put one cm cube of A into a test tube. Now you take test tube, right? In test tube, as you can see, I have also labeled it to show you that in a test tube, you will put one uh, cm cube of A, which is sulfuric acid, one cm cube of K, which is potassium permanganate, and one cm cube of the 10 M into the same test tube and mix well. 10 M means the first one that you made, the 10% one. Record the time taken to reach the endpoint, which means that you will take a stopwatch and note down the time which it takes to change the color of potassium permanganate from pink to colorless. If the endpoint is not reached in four minutes, which means around, uh, which is 240 seconds, then you just simply record more than 240 and record the color of the solution, whatever the color is, right? So this means four minutes is the maximum time. And then also remember that you will note down the time in whole seconds, right? You will not note it down in decimals or in minutes. Repeat step two to five. Repeat step two to step five for each of the concentrations of molecule M, which means whatever you have done, okay, for this particular concentration, noting down the time and all, you will repeat it for this concentration, for this one, and for this one. And yes, of course, when you're doing all that, the next question, which is most probable should be that you should know how to tabulate your data. So yes, this is a simple table in which you will prepare this and record your results for the known concentrations of molecule M. So yes, your left-hand column will be about the percentage concentration of molecule M. And then your right-hand column will be noting down the time in seconds. And uh, you will start with 10, and then you will move on gradually to decreasing concentrations. And yes, it's, it's just common sense to expect that as your concentration of molecule M is decreasing, so the time that it takes for the color to change should increase, okay? So your readings should follow a certain trend, right? Okay, and the time should be in whole seconds. Then, since you all know that you have also been provided with a plant extract U, right? And you do not know the plant extract U also contains uh, molecule M, but we do not know the concentration of molecule M in plant extract U. So we will repeat step two to step four with U. Okay, step two to step four with U. What was step two to four? These were the steps. Putting A, putting K, and then uh, putting one centimeter cube of 10 M, right? So we will repeat these steps so that we can find out the concentration of the molecule M in a sample of plant extract two, uh, is plant extract U. Then after that, we will do the same testing. We will see or note down the time that this plant extract U takes for the color of the potassium permanganate to change from pink to colorless. And then we will simply note down the, the time in seconds, whatever your reading is, right? After noting down the time in seconds, since you already have a certain table in which you have you know, uh, written down your data. So from your reading of time for, for plant extract U, you will be estimating the concentration of molecule M in sample U. It, it's just a rough estimate, right? And you can only do that when you compare this reading of time with the readings that have been given over here. And then of course, you can easily estimate what will be the concentration of molecule M in the plant extract U. After doing this, then you move on to the, uh, this part in which you will describe how you could use this procedure to produce a more accurate estimate of the concentration of molecule M in the sample of plant extract U uh, than the one given in A part four. I am deliberately leaving this part because if I give you the answers to each and every question, then you will not start, and you will not be able to think on your own because you should be having a practice about how to, you know, uh, how to improve your uh, experiment, how to include modifications in your experiment, how to improve the reliability or the accuracy. So this will be done by you. And uh, moving on to then this part. Now we are done with the practical thing and this is the theory part, okay? Now the theory part is about uh, a student suggested that molecule M might act as an antibiotic. In order to test this suggestion, the student carried out the following investigation. Bacteria was spread over the surface of a strip of agar gel containing nutrients. 
Bacteria were allowed to grow, shown by the shaded area in figure 1.1, right? You, ha you, you have been shown the shaded area in figure 1.1. And then um, small drops, which is two micrometer cube of different concentrations of molecule M were put onto the surface of the agar gel strip. After 24 hours, the inhibition area where bacteria were no longer observed was measured for each concentration of molecule M. So basically, we this experiment is, to sum up, we can say we are testing the efficacy of an antibiotic uh, for that specific bacteria. And yes, of course, it shows that the more efficient the antibiotic, the larger should be the area of the, uh, the larger should be the diameter, the area of the, uh, that particular zone, right? the larger should be the diameter of the inhibition area, basically, because it shows that the, the antibiotic has been successful in killing or destroying those bacteria, right? And you can see different concentrations of that antibiotic M has been used. See, as you can see, as the concentration of these antibiotics is increasing, the inhibition area, the diameter of the inhibition area is also increasing. <clears throat> You've been given a set of data, right? in which you have concentration of uh, the solution of molecule M in micrograms per centimeter cube. And you've been given the inhibition area in millimeter square because it's uh, a value for area. And you have to plot a graph. You should always know where to plot uh, which value. The dependent value will always come on the y-axis and the independent will come on the x-axis. Again, just to reinforce this, the dependent value is the one which you are measuring and the independent value is the one which you are trying to manipulate, right? So you are changing basically. So here, as you can see, you are changing or you are manipulating these values. So they should, they should come on the uh, x-axis and you are measuring. Whatever you are measuring is this, right? So inhibition area should come on the y-axis, right? So whatever value you measure will come on the y-axis and whatever you manipulate or you change will come on the x-axis. Um, I don't want to spoon feed all of you, so I'm just skipping this um, so that you can plot the graph on your own. You know the basic rules of plotting the graph, right? Your scale should be appropriate so that it should cover uh, more than two thirds of the grid space that, uh, that has been provided to you, okay? And then uh, from this graph, you will, after you're done with the plotting of these six points, you will use your graph to again estimate the inhibition area for a concentration of molecule M of 46 micrograms per centimeter cube. This also you will do on your own, right? In the end, if you have a problem, I will, uh, you know, share the mark scheme, my solved paper in the end, but still I, I want you to try it on your own. Explain how the data support the statement that molecule M might act as an antibiotic, this question. And the last question, which is, suggest how molecule M may act as an antibiotic, this one. Also, I am leaving for you guys to think about the answer yourself. And then we, we can have a discussion in the end. And anyways, I'll be sharing the mark scheme of this paper, right, on the classroom. So I hope this was helpful. Allah Hafiz.